All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice. Welcome to Middleware Friday for April 12th, 2019. This is episode 97. And today we're going to talk about mock testing Azure Logic Apps using static results. And this is a relatively new feature by Microsoft. So let's dive in and take a look. Before we do that, just a reminder that Integrate 2019, the biggest Microsoft integration conference on the planet, essentially, it's coming up here in June. There are two events. One is in London, June 3rd to 5th. And then there's another one in Redmond, Washington on Microsoft campus at the end of June. So go ahead and check that out. This talk 360 slash integrate 2019. Now this content was featured recently on a blog post that I put on serverless 360. And I walked through a different scenario of a customer service interaction that would occur with someone who is perhaps renting an apartment and they want to go ahead and call customer service and you know behind customer service is a CRM and within CRM naturally there's some sort of a database where customer information is stored and once the work order gets assigned to field technician they go ahead and they work on that work order they complete it the database is updated and you want to be able to send an email to the tenant indicating that the work order is now complete. So here's a question though, is how do you typically test these types of systems? You know, in the real world, you would, you know, there's a couple different options. Number one would be, well, you take a, a sort of a copy of this database and you would change some of the personal information, say email addresses, contact information, because you don't want to be sending out a customer an email indicating that their work order is complete when you've essentially been testing and the work order doesn't actually exist. So that becomes a little bit difficult. Another scenario might be is you create sort of a, a fake customer and this customer sort of lives in your systems and you know whenever you do some level of testing you would always use this fake customer. So in real life, yeah, it happens a fair bit. Uh, from a compliance perspective or SOX perspective, generally discouraged, um, but it does happen. But what we can do with mock testing is we can essentially take sample data or, and actually use that within different actions. And instead of the action actually calling out to the underlying service, it's gonna return your mock data or your static results instead. So let's go ahead, we'll let's head over to the Azure portal and we'll take a closer look at this. So here we are in the Azure portal. And I'm just going to walk you through the scenario without having any mock testing or static results enabled. So all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run this on a daily basis. You know, at the end of the day, we'll go ahead and call out and just have a recurrence trigger. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use an expression just to get today's date. And we're going to pass that into a stored procedure called get today's work orders. And then for each work order that is returned, we want to be able to get the customer information. So we'll take the customer ID from the work order table, and we will then call the get customer by ID to get more information. We will then go ahead and send an email, um, basically indicating that the work order has been completed. And uh, you know, please contact us with any additional uh, information. So that's that's essentially the, the logic app itself. Uh, nothing too complex. We'll just go ahead and, and run this. We'll find that there's two work orders that were created for today. So we'll go ahead and send out two emails. Now at the bottom there, I did sh there is a, an HTTP action. You might be wondering what that is. We're going to talk a little bit about that when we do negative testing. Uh, the idea is if we have a failure, at this point, we would go ahead and call this log point. And that's essentially what it is, is it's just a log point. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the base sort of scenario. Let's now take a look at happy path. So happy path meaning if everything goes well, this is what we would expect to happen to the logic app processing. Now, this logic app does have static results enabled, and we can tell based upon this beaker that exists. 
So let's go ahead and expand this action. And here we see static results preview. Let's go ahead and bring that, that up. And here's where we go ahead and can configure our action. Now, when you configure this, think about this as this is what I would expect my underlying service to return to me. Now that could be a, you know, a failure or it could be a successful call here. It's successful. Um, I can choose my status code and there's no shortage of status codes that are available. You know, generally, you know, we're using HTTP status codes. In this case, when you call a SQL store proc through the SQL connector, it returns a 200. So that's what we're going to use here. And then what we can do is provide a sample body. Um, and this is essentially the output that we would get from our SQL connector. And this is essentially, I go into the run history. I showed you the previous working logic app. I grab the run history. I then come here and I want to put it into a, my body. And there's, um, you know, here's a JSON editor that you can actually use to paste this all in. And, um, and, and this is the convention that you would expect. This is exactly what was returned from SQL. So we need to include it here. So this would include our status code, our body, if there's any output parameters, and then we would also have headers if appropriate. Now, so once again, copy it from your, your output of a working logic app itself. And then what we'll do is similarly, we'll, we'll provide you know, static results for downstream actions as well. Now do note, this one gets a little bit interesting. So here you'll notice we're in a loop, we have a for each. So remember, get work orders. Work orders returns an array could be one, could be many. But now here, what we're gonna do is loop through that collection and then go ahead and provide an input for our get customer by ID store proc. So here, what I've done is I've actually have two records that are modeled in my static results here, which means this loop is gonna run twice. Now, I don't have the ability to provide a collection here and say an index that says, okay, use index one, use index two. So here I'm just essentially going to go ahead and call it and pass the same data in for both calls. So not necessarily ideal, but not huge issue either. Just something to be aware of from that perspective. And then lastly, uh, we don't want to send the emails out, right? So here we go ahead and once again, provide a static result here and we can provide uh, here. I'm giving you an example of the headers. Uh, once again, not, doesn't have a real big impact on what I'm trying to do here, but this was essentially headers that were returned back from the Outlook call when I called it sort of in real life. And then also note that we don't have a body here. And the reason for that is that in the Outlook connector, it isn't actually returning a body when we go ahead and send an email action. So let's go ahead, let's run this. I remember this is our happy path. So we're essentially testing for success. We're expecting this to be a successful um, iteration or execution of our logic app. Okay, great. So it's successfully called. Now, once again, we have the beakers enabled here. And so we can see that our output is our mocked output. This is the information that was returned from our, our example. And then same thing when we try to get the customer. Uh, in this case, it's always going to get the same customer, as I explained previously because we're using the same sort of mock data and it's always in this case, customer one. Now, if we head over to email, same thing, we've got the beaker here. So we know that we're not actually sending emails. Uh, we're basically, you know, emulating what would occur by passing in those uh, static results. Now, one other thing to note is if you head over to your logic app and hit refresh, you will notice a field here called static results. What this means is that static results is currently enabled. So if this logic app gets called, it will use static results uh, because it's enabled. You don't have the ability, at least not at this point, to dynamically enable, disable static results. So that's something you have to be very mindful of. What is the current state of your logic app? Um, do you have static results enabled or, or not? Now let's flip gears. Let's head over to the negative path. So in this case, we are expecting some level of a failure to occur. And we want to actually ensure that we have coded our logic app to accommodate for this. Now, now we have a very similar configuration. 
uh, for the getting the work orders and getting the customer ID is exactly the same. But what we want to do differently this time is when I was actually doing some testing, I ended up with some intermittent uh, failures. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to essentially mock what that looked like. And so the way to do that is if I go into my static results, I would say I want to emulate what a failure would look like. So here I'd say, you know, status is failed. And here's an error message. So this is something that I had, you know, retrieved from a previous logic app run, basically saying that there's been a transient error. And as a result, my mail can't be delivered. Now, in this case, what I want to do is essentially just log that. So for the purpose of this blog post, just sending a message to request bin. But what I want to do is I want to configure run after and say, only use this HTTP action when my previous shape fails. But what we've done here is we've modeled it to fail. We've said, this is my mock result is I want to capture a failed sort of execution. And then, so this has given me a chance to basically accommodate for that and catch it. And so this is where I think the, the testing becomes fairly useful. In this case, it was a total coincidence that I was receiving some transient errors, but that does represent a scenario I would want to code for and be able to accommodate. So what I've done is I said, okay, this is a, a failure that I can encounter. I want to make sure my logic app can deal with that. So how do I create a mock test that is representative of that issue and then basically code around it so that, you know, I have got some coverage uh, whenever that issue does exist. So let's go ahead and run this. And sure enough, we have success here. So this, you know, is a failure, but it's been modeled as a failure. And then so what has happened is that we want to then go ahead and call this HTTP action. And if we go ahead and look at the HTTP action, we'll see that it was successful and that we were able to basically send out these results. Looks like there might've been a, a brief hiccup with this, but uh, it is working. We see that the, yeah, the action has been successful. So here we expect success. We expect success. We want to test for failure. We test for failure. The failure occurs because of our mock result. We then run the HTTP action because we had configured it to only run when the previous action has failed. And then we see that it has been executed. And now we should be confident that we've tested for that specific scenario and can move on. So that concludes this episode of Middleware Friday. Um, as a reminder, if you are watching this on integrationusergroup.com, great. Um, if you're watching it on YouTube, that's great too. So don't forget to like and subscribe the YouTube channel, BizTalk360, and then you'll get notifications whenever new episodes do arrive. Sometimes there is a bit of a tape delay in getting these uploaded to YouTube, but generally within a few weeks, you'll see the latest episode. So once again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks uh, BizTalk360 for being a great partner of the show, and we'll catch you next week on Middleware Friday. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life.